Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my God, my Master, my strength, my Redeemer, the only one who I have a covenant with. I give you my all. I give you my life. All praises go to you, God, for you alone, you alone are worthy. Amen. I am brought before you to give warnings, more warnings regarding the times that we are in. God's messages are not to be sugarcoated. They're not the type of messages where I'm here to tickle your fancy and to tell you about the blessings of God. Those come naturally, but they coincide with the punishment of God. I know that each and every one of us are in this space where we are trying to figure out different things in life that are happening, what is going on with the day, it's, it are, whatever is going to happen on the planet, is it going to happen at any second, and are we prepared? I feel strongly in my heart that a lot of people are not prepared. So I begin to pray even more and ask God to show me more details and reference to what was coming and what he wanted me to give to you all to help prepare you. This message is only for those who have eyes to hear. May God open up their eyes so they can so they can see it in their ears so they can hear it. But anyone else who's here to judge or to tell me how God is supposed to give messages to you, that is your personal connection, your personal relationship with God that you lack. This is why you come here to attack me to tell me what God did not say. Because you lack relationship with the most high God. So therefore, you're not getting any rela any relationship messages because you're too busy in the attack mode versus seeking God for yourself. So therefore, the Bible says when you do that, you have been given over to a reprobate mind. There's a lot of distractions right now. Demons don't like me giving out messages like this. So Demon Spray is a great song, y'all. This is the time to use that song. Um, there's a, other anointed songs that I've done. There's other anointed songs of people who really love God that are out there. But trust me, we're in the hour right now where pastors, false prophets, false leaders, teachers, and guides who claim to be sent by God that are giving out messages that they just feel that God wants them to say, God is putting an end to all of that. As a matter of fact, you're going to begin to see pastors fall dead on the stage while preaching their sermons because God is tired of it. God showed me, God showed me in my dream where soldiers just all of a sudden showed up in America. This is a whole nother occasion. I, I have several dreams where God shows me where show, soldiers are just going to show up just out of nowhere in America. And I was in this apartment. There's this guy looking out the window. I can't tell. It looked like it could have been a, a Chicago apartment, um, the Carolinas. I don't know. It could have been anywhere in the U.S., Te Texas, Tennessee. I don't know. But I don't even know why I was in this apartment. But I was there with my child. There are other people that were there behind me. But... We saw the military come um, outside and they began to yell for the guy that was in the house. And everyone was afraid because we looked out the window and saw a strong, deep military presence. So the military began to call the guy out the house on a PA system. And he began to yell his name. And the guy was like, well, I'm going to go out there and clear my name because I didn't do anything. What God was showing me was that when the guy went outside to clear his name to tell the officers, the military, that he didn't do anything. There were charges that were brought against him that he had no clue why he was not involved in anything negative or anything where he should have had charges put against him. But what God was showing me is that there are charges that are coming against his people, especially the, the black man. There are charges and accusations that are going to be brought against the black man because the black man refuses to not stand the space of lust. 
God showed me that this man was brought out of a house. When, when he was brought out the house, they asked him because I went to go look out the window and I saw them talking to him. But in my spirit, I heard them ask him. They were really far away. So I don't know how I heard it. But I heard the officer say, who else is in the house? The, when he, while he was asking who else is in the house, I grabbed my daughter's arm while everyone was waiting for him to come back. And I slipped out this side door in between the back door where God just provided this invisible door and this exit route escape route for us to leave and by the time I looked up my daughter and I we were halfway down the block because we took the back alley to get out and we were behind everything next thing you know we heard this big explosion people started screaming and people started running out the house it's like they threw something in the window or something to make everyone come out the house so everyone started running out the house and screaming and children and women they were separated the men were separated the men were put in specific categories with, with other men. The women were put in specific categories with other women. The children were put in specific categories with other children. But there was a knowing that they were tagging them. It's like they were tagging their bodies like you would tag a cow as to where they were going to go. What I know within my heart is that a lot of the, the dream was showing me that we came up during a time where a lot of us or our family or both throughout our generation, we have become worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. So what I was being shown was that a lot of children were born during a time where the parents were very heavily involved evol involved, in fornication, adultery, pornography. Because they were involved in pornography, they were drugged um different types of drugs were out i don't know what, if it was a cocaine era the crack era the methamphetamine era the ecstasy era i'm not sure i just know that a lot of drugs were used a lot of um people who grew up during these times had some sense of you know let me just break out of my parents house away from my grandparents and now i'm free i can do whatever i want to do but a lot of that was sexual stimulation. And a lot of that came from, you know, movies, old school movies like Animal House that sparked a lot of things. A lot of the old music videos um, that sparked a lot of things. So what I was being shown that because of that, when either my generation or our parents' generation were very intimate or promiscuous or committing these adulterous and fornication acts, children were born. Children were born out of wedlock. There's a lot of secrets in the family where mom is actually has a baby by the uncle. Um, there's a lot of abortions that were done. There was sister and sister or sister and brother relationships, father and daughter relationships. A lot of babies were born out of wedlock. A lot of babies were born and handed over somewhere else because people were trying to cover up sins. And that's why or secrets. And that's why so many babies have been aborted. But what God was showing me is that the generation that's coming up now, we have a lot of handsome men, a lot of sexy men, a lot of men who um, it doesn't matter their age. If they are 20 years old and they see a 50 or 60 year old woman, they feel that they're mature enough to still get with that 50 or 60 year old woman and they're doing it and that they've always done it. But now it's more out in the open. What God was showing me was that the women that are coming up now are very beautiful but god was showing me that the men and the women are very very beautiful and enticing during these times because a lot of them are mixed with the nephilim blood bloodline the nephilim blood bloodline is the fallen angels it's the same exact thing that happened when god sent the angels here to earth to warn the humans but yet instead they made it with them so we're having a repeat of that all over again. So there's a lot of fallen angels here who had babies. A lot of babies were born during a, a pornography era. This is a pornography area uh, area era now. Is it Mercury retrograde? Because my tongue is twisted, but I'm going to get these words out. So a lot of the people that you think are human, they're not human. They're half Nephilim bloodline. And there are several different types of Nephilim bloodline. There's like five different types of Nephilim bloodline giants 
or f- different fallen angels. And um, when God releases me, I'll go into another video one day and I'll break that down to y'all as well. But a lot of God's people are worshiping um, UFOs or giants or ancestors that they give more praise to. And the Bible clearly states, do not worship the dead. So God has given people over to a reprobate mind so much to where they will believe a lie. And this is why everyone is accepting homosexuality or accepting, um, you know, relationships of female and female and male on male or the transgender era is coming in because it's all a huge setup. It's such a huge setup in such a way to where none of us are really going in on our own personal connections and our own personal relationships with God. God wants each and every one of us right now to focus on our connection and our relationship with him like never before, because right now there have been demons that have been released to cause each and every one of us individually to fall into sin, sin of some type of lust, whatever your fantasy is, these demons have been strategically assigned to make sure that your wish, your fantasy is fulfilled whether it's committing adultery, whether it's committing fornication, whether it's having multiple partners, whatever your fantasy is, those wishes are going to be granted. Now, I know many of you are like, oh, wow, like I can have whatever fantasy I want, whatever wish I want. But let me tell you something else. While your wishes are being granted, while you're in the space of a reprobate mind, while you're eyes are clouded, your mind is clouded, your ears are clogged because you can't hear from the Holy Spirit because you're your temple is so filled with lust and so filled with sin that you can't even hear the spirit. But what God was assuring me of and and letting me know is that because a lot of his people love to be naked, like if you look at people on the internet, they're showing their cleavage or their breast, or it doesn't even have to be on the internet. It's somewhere in person. You wear what you want to wear. You can cover yourself or you can show cleavage, but you're trying to attract something if you are showing your body, if you are revealing yourself. So God says, because you have chosen to reveal yourself, because you want to be in this space where you're filled with lust, when these soldiers come in, I'm sorry, you guys, excuse the door. I don't know what that is going on with my family, but it is what it is. When, because you like to reveal yourself, because you like to reveal yourself, what God was showing me is that these soldiers that are coming in are going to turn you over to sex slaves, sex trafficking. I saw people who were um, chained up like, like, you know, like the slaves were. They weren't just chained up. Many were chained. Many had zip ties. Many had um, rope around them, shackles around their feet, around their arms. Many were um, bound from their mouth where they had tape or something over their mouth because they were screaming or they wouldn't be quiet because they were being separated from their families or the grandmas or the fathers. So these people that I saw in a crowd were all completely naked. There was no underwear on them. There was no bra. There was no, just, it was all flesh showing. And God was saying the reason he's going to allow that to happen because so many of his people, so many people It's worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Like God has warned us over and over again. If your eye causes you to sin, it is best for you to pluck it out than to spend eternity burning in the bottomless pit because you cannot stop lusting with your eyes. And the Bible states clearly that if you're married and you look at another woman, you've already committed adultery in your heart. But people have gotten to this point now to where, especially God's people, where People feel like just because Yeshua died on the cross for our sins, that that gives them the rites of passage to do whatever they want to do. And they can just repent and God will forgive them. Well, the devil and his minions are praying right now, too. The devil and his minions know that their time is short. So they're doing everything in their power to distract you. But you're only being distracted because of the lust and the adultery that is within your own heart. So many of you are cloaking your feelings with drugs or alcohol or uh, promiscuity or sex or pornography or whatever it is that 
you feel that or even food that you have been drawn towards that is distracting you from even fasting because the devil knows that this window is short. It's very short. Any second now, we're about to hear the biggest crack. I can't even explain it. It's going to be the biggest crack. But when when you when I say crack, you're going to know that these specific soldiers are not only here on the land, but we're going to be surrounded. We're already surrounded now for the north, east, west, and south. They will be everywhere. I saw them coming out of the rocks in visions. I saw them coming out of the mountains. I saw the statues coming open. They were breaking open statues that were coming. I saw them coming out of empty containers that you they thought were empty, crates they thought were empty. There's containers in your neighborhood right now that are just empty truck containers just sitting there, just placed there. It says made in China or something, but they're, they already have their equipment, everything all over the place. Your job right now is to do everything in your power to try to do your best to make it into heaven. There are people that are around you that know the rules. They hear you warning them, but it's not your job to continue to warn them because at this point, God says that people love sin. They love it so much that they want you to water down your warning so they'll be comfortable in their sins. God says that there are so many men who are interested in other men, men who are dipping off with other men, men who are creating sacrifices and offerings to deities and sex deities and sex demons and spirit spouses because of the lust in their heart. They have been drowned out by lust in their heart. There is more lust in their heart than there is to have a strong relationship with the Most High God. When I ask God about polygamous relationships or polyamorous relationships, it was shared with me one verse. If the I, if you even so much look at another woman and you're married or look at another man and you're married, the Bible clearly states that you have committed adultery in your heart. So that's the answer that I got in reference to multiple partners or multiple relationships or even sex outside of marriage or sex outside of, you know, being married or being single. I saw these soldiers take not just the guy away, but everyone that was in the home. And it was interesting because it was a huge tank, a huge military tank, y'all. But half of the back of the tank was a military tank. The front half of the the tank was not a tank. It was a motorcycle. It was like a like a three-wheeled motorcycle would be shaped, but it was an actual live robot that was running this tank. And in the back of the tank were different compartments where it can go way down into the ground if they, you know, open up different compartments. But there was different, like hundreds of soldiers already inside of it. It didn't even look like it. And then I saw where there's tentacles that comes out of these tank machines like octopus claws and they break windows and they go to snatch people out of the house who's been hiding in um, high riser apartments or, you know, apartments that are higher than second and third and fourth and 15 floors. And there's heat systems that they use. So even if someone is hiding inside of a wall, they can see you through these heat senses glasses that they have on. But what's coming here over the land, y'all, I woke up and I woke up in tears crying, asking God to have mercy even on me because there's a lot of things that all of us are clearing out right now. But one of the th the main things I noticed is that we're all clearing out some type of hurt or some type of pain or some type of blame or some type of animosity. And even if you're holding anger in your heart against God or God's people or even yourself, you could have not forgiven yourself for something that right there will take you directly to hell. And I feel like the only reason, and I, I know the only reason that God has not struck the land yet is because he's given us a chance to repent. That's how loving and how amazing that God is. But once all this stuff pops off, I see so many of God's people begin to speak in tongues, begin to pray to God, and their prayers aren't heard. Their prayers aren't answered. No one's coming to save you. No one's coming to deliver you. No one's coming to help you find a way of escape. Those Bible verses aren't going to work for you anymore because you have decided, you've made a choice to go down with the devil. So as that voice crying out in the wilderness, I'm doing everything in my power 
to fight through my own personal trials and tribulations, to be strong enough to come before you humbly to give you these warnings before the Most High God. You don't have to believe me, but trust me when I say that God will remind you that you have been warned. I saw it. I saw it on Judgment Day. So many people are going to denounce that they didn't know. They're going to say, I didn't know. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do this, but God's going to play memories back in your head because it's not just one person warning you. It's multiple people warning you. And it's not just this time that you're being warned. You've been told this and warned your whole lifetime, but so many people don't even know God so much to where they don't even know one Bible verse. They don't care to know one Bible verse. So many people know the warnings. They hear about the warnings. They know what's happening. They'll tune into channels like mine and they instantly rebuke me or it could be you not rebuking me and you hearing the message. But then 30 minutes later, five minutes later, you hang up this video and you go back to the same life that you've been living. You go back to the same ways that you've been living. But that could be that one second that you decide to think of something out of, you know, a, like lust or fornication or adultery or robbing or stealing or murder, all those things that does not put you in a place to remind you that your body truly is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And for those of you out there who are wives, those of you who are out there who are husbands, wives, the Bible says, obey, it says, honor your husband, respect your husband, for this is well with the Lord. Respecting your husband is respecting yourself, is respecting your body, respecting your temple. When you respect your temple and you honor your temple, you heal your husband. When you come off all your crutches and all your drugs and all your drinking and all your alcohol and all of your blaming and complaining, you heal your husband. Husbands, the Bible says, love your wife like you love the church. And if you truly love God, then your focus would not only be pleasing God and making sure that God is satisfied with your walk so much to where you will if your wife complains, like, you know, you don't, you, you don't make me feel good about myself. You know, I, I don't feel loved. You know, he, your husband is there to remind you, yes, I love you. But what's most important is your love with God, your connection with God. And that's what it should be. You should always make sure that your husband or your wife, their relationship is closer with God, because however your husband or your wife is, However they are towards themselves and towards you is how they are towards their walk and their relationship with God. But God is not playing with none of us. God is not accepting any more faulty prayers or fake asking for forgiveness because we keep asking for forgiveness, but we keep doing the same exact thing. And this is why God has given so many of you one last chance, one last chance to just Stop, stop what you're doing before it's too late. So there is a warning in this. And it's interesting because the same, same exact night that I had a dream about the guy being taken out of the house, being arrested. A friend of mine had a dream the same night about another guy being arrested and, you know, taken by the soldiers, taken by the feds. I do feel that there is a conspiracy, can spirit see? I do feel that there is a big um, block sale that's going on for black men because black men will be the first ones that will be drafted into the war. And just like y'all saw on the news where Putin went to go get millions and millions or thousands of thousands of men where he just raided people's home and they begin to flee. The women begin to flee. The children begin to flee. Did you have something to say? You want to say something? Hello? Oh, I thought they were trying to add into this video, but I forgot my train of thought and that's just how spirits work. I'm going to end it right there. You guys get my point. All right. So stay focused because the devil don't want y'all to get this message. Like I said, there's all kind of distractions that come when there's messages like this given out because it's about your soul. But at this point, only you can save your soul because ain't nobody praying for you. There is literally no one praying for you. And if you had somebody praying for you that truly love you like that, then it'll be a lot easier because trust me, your prayers are being worked on. 
your prayers are being heard. For example, God was showing me to where there are specific areas or homes or neighborhoods where there is a prayer warrior, one of God's people. And you don't even have to be a prayer warrior. You could be a child that just says a simple prayer. And because a child is praying over their home or prayed for their neighbor or something, that block right there, demons don't come down. They don't mess with it. Unless there's heavy, heavy, heavy witchcraft involved, they still very little mess with it, but usually don't mess with it when there's prayers in that home or over that neighborhood. But when there's no prayers at all, that's the devil's job to distract you from your prayers, to distract your family so much from each other to where y'all so busy fighting and blaming each other or accusing each other or everything could be smooth. Everything could be just fine. And then all of a sudden someone in the house will make up something wrong because they're not used to a peaceful environment. They're not used to a peaceful life. So my point here is I'm going to circle back around to letting y'all know that if you stay with God, stick as close as you can with God. And when these thoughts come to your mind to be lustful, to commit fornication, to commit adultery, remember those are demons, y'all. Those are demons. Demons can travel from body to body to spirit to spirit. That's why so many people are having sex with everybody. It's like open season. There's no relationships. The only true, real, honorable relationships are those that God put together for the people that came together in God. Other than that, there's no real relationships. And even the people that came together in God, there are so many demons that are assigned to them to do everything in their power to break them up. So what your job is right now is to not focus on if your spouse or your mate or your children, or your mom, or your dad, or your friend, or your roommate is getting what you're saying, is understanding how you're living with God, how close that you are. What your job is, is to focus on you and make sure that you make it into heaven. Because that person literally could have been sent by the devil as a plant in your life to distract you from making it into heaven. And because you're so busy on trying to find out, do they love me? Do they love me? More than you're trying to focus on God saying, you know what? I don't care if they love me or not. As long as God loves me, I'm good because God's to the point right now to where God will, if you, if, if you are that type of person, I've seen it, I've heard about it. I know for a fact, as a matter of fact, I'm very sure there's probably a few of y'all listening to this channel right now that has happened to, I've seen it. I've seen where a person is faithful to God. They love God so much, but their spouse will not stop cheating. I've seen God take that spouse out and that person will be made a widow. I've seen that. And I've seen God do that because, and I've also seen opposite. I've seen where the person is a very strong prayer warrior. They're very close to God. And I've seen God take that person out because the person that they were with, they were taking that person for granted, or it was because of that person's prayers that they weren't even six feet under. So I'm letting y'all know with all your might, with all your power, do everything that you can to, you know, pray, pray, pray that over your mind that your mind will be excluded from lust or promiscuity or feeling that you have to be loved or watch any type of porno or if you feel energies to touch yourself inappropriately in a in a in a, a illful way but it's time that y'all make a decision about your own personal life and in, sp in spite of who's around you because people that are around you they're not strong like that they're they're not only are they not strong like that they're not strong like that because since they were little, they have been taught to grow up, to go to counseling, to listen to other people, which means they are automatically trained to go to other people for advice versus a lot of people were automatically trained as a child to go to God, to go to the Bible. So that's how they are being healed. That's even how they're making it through these steps because they're used to going to God versus the people who were taught to go to man. When people are taught to go to man, their, their ways are unstable. For the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of their ways. You cannot serve two masters. You can only serve the God of Abraham or you're going to serve the devil. And you can't walk both sides of the gate. you got to choose a side. And right now, not only have you chosen a side, many of you have, but at the same time too, the devil is doing everything in this power to make sure that you fall off because there is a bet that you will make it to hell. So there is demons that will come before you as the most beautiful Egyptian queen, the most handsome, sexy male model that you can ever dream of in your life 
will all of a sudden come before you or walk before you or things that you may try to take away from yourself or fast or get away from. All of a sudden you go on this prayer life and all of a sudden sexy Jane is walking in front of you with the big butts, the big boobs and the big tights. Or the superhero guy with the strong muscles is opening the door for you or standing behind you in line saying, I'll hold your groceries for you while you check out. Or do you need help to the car? So these are all demonic setups. You have to watch the tethers, watch what's in your own mind, watch the music you listen to. But most importantly, check yourself because no one else is going to check you. Check yourself. If you need help, ask God for help. Oh, the whining you hear in the background, by the way, is is my new puppies they're barely 24 hours old and we name one thunder and one rain and the mama's name is snowball so we have snow thunder and rain but i just wanted to share that what the whining was about but i'm going to close this out with a scripture that god gave me for this message and that is romans chapter 8 verse 14 Okay, where is it? Okay, it's actually 12. Romans chapter 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit do more mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bear witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may not that we may be also glorified together so that's romans chapter 8 verses 12 through 17 and i recommend that you go and you just meditate on it and when i say meditate on it you just read the verse and you sit in silence and when you study the word of god y'all keep your phones away from yourself do whatever you can because i i, I can assure you they're sending signals and tethers through these phones so People can't even walk. People are walking with their face in the phone. People are distracted so much by the phone. They can't even take care of their regular family every day to day task because these phones are deeper than you think. There are portals. They're sending tethers and signals. There is movies about us, about that. And the movie is called They Live. If you want to be more specific about the movie, go check that out and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But they know who you are. But the thing is, do you know who you are? And the only way that you can truly know who you are is in Christ, in Abba Father. And he will show you who you are and why you are born and why he brought you here. Man could never tell you that. I don't care. You can pay for 100,000 psychics, but all them psychics are on their way to hell at the cost of trying to steal energy from you, at the cost of giving you messages from angels that they claim are angel messages. Those aren't angel messages. Those are angel messages, but they're fallen angel messages. That's what they forgot to add on those specific videos for those of you who are addicted to readings and tarot cards and addicted to finding out your future. Even a lot of God's people who are giving prophetic messages, it's witchcraft, it's sorcery, because God's not giving you messages like that. I hate to say it, but it's true. That's what he told me. Especially if you're on there two, three times a day, just giving messages over and over and over and over again. When do you have time to seek God's face? That's the question. That's what he wanted me to ask you. So be careful because I don't want to be one of those people that's in hell for giving out false prophecies. So I'm even making sure that before I even give out messages, even now, it's taking me longer to give out the messages because I'm absorbing it and making sure, God, you sure you want me to say this? So now he's going in on the dreams again, and he's having me share with y'all what it is that I'm seeing. And America is surrounded. America's already surrounded so much. And you don't think you think it's the, the seashores. It's your local town. It's your local city. It's your local neighborhood. It's your home. This is going to happen. 
You don't have to believe me. You don't have to receive me. But by the time you look up, you're going to realize that every single thing that I've been speaking of, that I warned you about, it's it's happening and it's going to happen. I'm past my point of tears about this. And now I'm just trying to strengthen myself in the Lord. And I highly recommend you do the same. Nubian Divine.